Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and Apple released macOS Tahoe 26 Beta 4. macOS Tahoe 26 Beta 4 is available to developers and should be the same as macOS Tahoe 26 Public Beta 1. So if there's no additional issues and they don't issue in a re-release or a revision version, this should be the same as Public Beta 1, which is hopefully out very soon by the time you're watching this video or soon after. Now this came in at 7.88 gigabytes and I installed this for the first time on this particular MacBook. And so that's not as big as iOS 26. So not a huge update overall, considering it's a first beta and reinstalling everything. And this was released alongside many other updates with iOS 26 beta 4, iPadOS 26 beta 4, updates for Vision OS, TV OS, HomePod OS, and Watch OS as well. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the build number and talk about what's new. So we'll close out of this, we'll go into settings, then we'll go to general and then about. And as you can see, this particular update has a build number of 25A5316I. That's how you know you're on the latest version. And so you can see what version you're on here, making sure you're on the latest beta as it doesn't say beta four, but it's based off the build number. Now, as far as new features, well, the first thing is liquid glass. You may not be able to see this as well here, but it looks like right here we do have some of the glass effect. If I change this maybe to dark mode here, you can see some of it here where it's highlighted a little bit. There is more of this effect and less of this effect throughout macOS 26 beta 4. For example, if we go into the control center, you can see it kind of looks the same as beta 3, but some of the blur effects take a second to pop in there. So you'll see that pop up from time to time. If we go into music, you'll see that they've changed the overall bar here at the bottom. Let's go back into light mode as it's a little bit easier to see that. The glass effect with the translucency has been improved this time. There's more translucency and less like frosted glass. However, if we go into things such as the app store, this actually looks less like liquid glass and more like frosted glass. So depending on the app you're in, it looks just like iOS 26 beta three to beta four. They've made some changes, but some of it might need to change over the next few betas or so. Another place that they've added liquid glass is Safari. Within Safari at the top, you'll see that we have translucency, but if we go back to the main screen here, we actually have liquid glass at the top. But if we go maybe to Google, You'll see here, it looks like we have less liquid glass. It's more like frosted glass. The same is true if we go to Apple. So it looks less obvious that we have liquid glass. So I would imagine they'll continue to update this as we definitely have it on the main page, but not when we're on specific websites, it seems. Now upon initial boot up, if you have a Mac that supports Apple intelligence, such as this one with an M4 processor, if we go into our screenshots here, the first time I booted this up, you'll see it actually presented me with a summarize notifications option. And this time around, just like iOS 26 beta four, we can now summarize news again. This is something that Apple removed that they've brought back with beta four on all devices. So under Apple intelligence, you won't find it here, but you'll find it under notifications and under not notifications, we have summarize, and then you can select your apps that you want it to summarize. So you won't see the news app within here, but it does ask you if you want to summarize news and then gives you a warning about it as well. So that's something that's new and notifications in the notification center have been updated a little bit as well. If we go to our notifications, you can see there's a bunch of them here. And if we scroll up, you'll see that we have four more notifications, click on it. And of course we have the X to clear it. And then we have the button here before we clear it down at the bottom. Some people are seeing the clear option at the top. So if we clear all notifications, this one will not go away. So if I try to clear it, it wouldn't go away earlier. Even with clear all notifications, there's definitely some odd bugs throughout, but some people are seeing the button to clear at the top. Some are seeing it at the bottom like me. And those notifications also have more of a rounded look to them as they're showing up. If we go into the control center, they've made a small change here as well. This is a visual change where if I move my mouse over sound, you'll see a little bubble up here. If I click on it, it turns to liquid glass and then I can slide it. I would imagine this will change as that's sort of an odd behavior, but before this little bubble was there all the time. You'll see if I do the same over display, it goes to that. If I go back to sound, it disappears on display and so on. So we can go back and forth with that. So they'll probably change that again with the next betas. 
Now, if we go into Finder, now within Finder, they've grouped some of the tools together. So before in beta three, I had these spread out a little bit more. So it looks like it's grouped together. And again, you can see liquid glass effects throughout. However, it changes greatly depending on which app you're in. Another thing they've updated is the mail icon. It looks a little bit more consistent. Some other app icons have to do with network drives. So if you're using a network drive or time machine, you'll actually see some app icon updates here. I'm not using any currently, so you don't see it, but you can see one posted from Reddit. You can see the post from Reddit where they have a new icon for this. And we may see this eventually on Mac OS as well with the hard drive. We don't really know, but it looks like it's been updated again with network drives looking the same as well. Another thing to note is that when you use spotlight, so maybe you hit command and spacebar, we'll tap continue here. And when you're in the main spotlight search, once you go out of that, maybe we go into the apps here or our applications, click out of it, then go back into spotlight. So we'll click on command space again, it goes right back into spotlight search instead of going into your apps. So it's persistent now or goes back to spotlight search where it remembered it before. So of course you have your files, actions, and then your clipboard here. So you can just highlight over the little search icon and it shows up. So if we do that again, we'll go back into spotlight you'll see, give it a second and it switches on its own as well. So it shows you what's going on here without having to highlight over the search icon, giving you the additional options. Now, one bad piece of news is if you were using Launchpad, maybe you were using the workaround using terminal to bring it back. It looks like they've removed the icon for it. So it's more of a question mark now when you're missing one of these icons. So that may be a downside for you. Since I didn't cover a couple of the previous betas, I wanted to talk about a couple other things. One of them has to do with the wallpaper. If we go into the wallpaper, we'll scroll down here, go into our wallpaper. We have a couple options here now with Tahoe Day. So we have an all new wallpaper here if you didn't see this in previous videos. And then of course we have our light and dark modes for this one. So just a slight change here where this one is animated. So if I lock the screen, you'll see the water move. We'll unlock it and then it comes to a stop and you'll see that here. So pretty nice little effect there. And if we go back to my photos, we have that option here as well. Also, I've seen some people comment on preview. So if we go into preview, maybe we'll open up this one. You'll see this is the current wallpaper that I have. I'll link it in the description. We have an icon here in the upper right. This is to remove the background. So it says convert it to a PNG and then it removed the background. So some people are saying they're not seeing this icon lit up where you can click on it, but it depends what it is. And so we can go back there. Of course, you can remove the background quickly from anything else. You can see that here where I got a splash screen in the music app. So again, if we click on this icon, it removes the background, not perfectly around the edges, but it does remove it and it will continue to remove it as you click on it. And of course you could go back if you don't want it to do that. Now there are a few bugs and bug fixes throughout the update. One of the bugs in particular has to do with Safari. We'll take a look at the release notes in a moment, but if I open up a new tab, you can barely read it here in light mode. However, if I click on maybe Apple, then it changes and you can read it. So this clearly has some work that needs to be done to it over time. And you'll see that I'm sure maybe with beta five at this point. I've also heard from some that say this won't work with an external display. However, I'm using a pro display XDR right now and it's working fine. So I guess it depends on the display you have or maybe specific devices. Now, if we take a look at the release notes, there are quite a few here and I won't go over all of them, but there's 32 categories of resolved issues. Meaning if we go down to where maybe it says resolved, there could be multiples under each one of those categories. Also, there's 25 categories of known issues as well that remain. So lots of things in here, definitely worth checking out. If you're having an issue, make sure that it's not known. And if it isn't, make sure that you report feedback in the feedback app. So if you're using the beta, make sure to use feedback and I don't see it here, but let's search for it and you can find it there. So make sure you're reporting feedback in the feedback app if you're having issues. As far as performance, while I was a little bit hesitant to put this on my Mac, since this is actually a production Mac and you saw the specs a little bit earlier, it's an M4 Max, pretty much fully specced out. And so far it seems very smooth. Of course, there are those few bugs I showed you just a moment ago, but in general, it seems to be very fast. And many people have said that Final Cut Pro is working fine. You'll see how quickly everything opens. It's nice and fast. And of course I'll have to use it over the next week or two to see what it's like, but overall it's generally pretty good. 
Battery life, of course, is a concern. Many people initially have been saying that it's not great. So you'll see I'm currently at 97% or last charge to 97% rather, and it's plugged into a Pro Display XDR. But if we go to battery health, I'm at 100%. Again, this isn't that old of a Mac, but I typically just leave it on optimized battery charging and it gets me through the day and I can edit multiple videos with it. But you can see the usage here. I typically leave it plugged in, but those that have been using it on battery have said that it's not that great so far. So if you're wondering if you should install Mac OS Tahoe Beta 4, I would probably hold off if you're concerned about battery life or bugs. Otherwise, it seems to be okay so far. But again, your applications may not work properly, so just keep that in mind. Now, as far as Mac OS 26 Public Beta 1, it could be out by the time you're watching this video. Most likely it will be. And based on what we've seen in the past, we could expect maybe Mac OS 26 Beta 5 as soon as maybe next Tuesday. We don't know 100%, but we could be moving to a weekly cycle. If not, we'll see that probably after beta five. So we'll have to wait and see what Apple does there. But usually once the public beta comes out, we're pretty close to a weekly release schedule. And then we'll have those weekly releases typically all the way up until the end of August, where we get ready for September, where we have it released to the public, usually in mid to late September. So that's what we can expect as far as a release schedule. And so that's everything in Mac OS 26 beta four, not a huge update, more of a change to liquid glass, refinements, behavior refinements, and more. Let me know if you found any anything else or noticed anything different with beta four, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. And of course I'll link this wallpaper in the description. Like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.